Well, an exciting week in Major League Lacrosse in week two, the most dramatic game taking place in Ohio where the Denver Outlaws scored a last second victory over the Ohio machine behind Warrior Offensive Player of the Week, Mike Bocklet's last second goal, and he joins us now. Mike, thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us. No problem. Thanks for having me. So, Mike, let's, let's get the getting to know you portion of this out of the way. I think Major League Lacrosse fans are very familiar with your brothers, Matt and Chris, who have been with the Outlaws for a few years now, Matt a little bit longer, and were on the championship team a year ago. Where do you fit in? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, I'm the oldest of the bunch. Um, you know, uh, ahead of Matt and Chris, obviously. And uh, a year above Matt, so I graduated uh, college a year before him. A uh, little known fact, we actually played two years together as he started at Fairfield, where I, where I played, uh, before going on to Hopkins. So, so What's it like playing with these guys now? You said a few years out of college. I mean, you played with Matt a couple years in college, but what's it like to play with both of them? Um, it's, I mean, it's, it, there's really nothing better. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's just such a great opportunity to – uh, play with them. Obviously, Matt, we grew up playing together on teams, uh, played in college for two years, uh, and really just always enjoyed that. And then, and Chris, just being so much younger, never really thought it was possible. And then at the, you know, kind of the pinnacle of the game, the major league lacrosse, MLL, uh, watching them do it last year in the last few years and be able to join them this year, it's, uh, it's cool. It's, it, it's really special, and uh, I've been enjoying it a lot. Well, so you said you're a year older than Matt, so been out of college since 2008, give or take? 2007, I graduated, yep. 2007, so that's a six-year difference. Tell us, how did you end up with the Outlaws here in 2015? Sure, so uh, I had uh, originally out of college, been drafted by the, the Long Island Lizards at the time, uh, played well with them, never really made it off the practice roster, didn't get into a game, uh, but enjoyed that experience. And then pretty quickly after that, went uh, onto the college side, college coaching side, spent uh, two years at Cortland, two years at Dartmouth, uh, and now the head coach at uh, a new program, uh, Purchase College, SUNY Purchase in Westchester. But uh, this spring was the first spring that I, I didn't have a season, a college season to take up a lot of my time. I think uh, seeing these guys play together the last two, three years um, and being a huge fan of enjoying it and just kind of, you know, inside wishing. Uh, I could get out there with them and feeling like maybe I still could, you know, like kind of questioning myself. And uh, so lucky enough, I was uh, I was out in Denver for a ski weekend that I had booked. And uh, the Denver Outlaws also hosted an open tryout. And I said uh, to myself, I, I got to I got to go try at least try. So uh, they picked me up and uh, the rest kind of has been history. It's uh, been playing really well and been really enjoying being a part of the organization. Well, you talk about making the most of your chance. Five goals in the first two games of the 2015 season, including four uh, this past weekend against Ohio. So kind of take us through. We'll start with the biggest one. Take us through the game winner. Sure. Well, uh, you know, the uh, this last game, I, I really in my mind was thinking I got to be a little bit more aggressive. You know, you can't be hesitant in this league uh, or, you know, the next guy just comes right in and, and he does it and uh, he's the man. So uh, kind of going into this game, that was the plan moving forward. End of the game, you know, I had three goals already. So, I, you know, I was feeling pretty good. Uh, it, we had that dead ball call. They were trying to figure out the clear and realized that all, all of a sudden I had a short stick on me and uh, an opportunity to get to the ball and then just turn and make a sprint for the cage, knowing that uh, the matchup was there and uh, was able, you know, sprint, get a step under my man and, use the MLL crease dive to uh, get across the goalie's face and, and tuck it in for a goal. Nothing quite like scoring a game winner, I would imagine, especially at this level after such a long layoff. So right. um, so what, what comes next? You guys got a bye week and then you jump back into it. So what's the rest yeah. of the season looking like for you guys? Yeah, so I mean, for, for me, it, it's, you know, coming into this, it's I'm a week-to-week -week player. You know, they've, they've got some guys in the indoor league right now that are, you know, big names, both indoor and outdoor. They've got some great college guys coming in soon. Uh, so, you know, my attitude the whole time has been uh, go week by week and just when you're out there and playing, enjoy it, have fun, and you've got nothing to lose. Uh, I think that's something maybe with age I've, I've learned to appreciate and, and use to my advantage. And then so, you know, we have a bye week. We play at our first home game at Denver. Uh, assuming that uh, I'm suiting up for that, uh, I feel – really psyched to be at home and to get on the field with the you know the brothers again uh and then uh you know after that game we got to play well and keep, 
keep myself on the roster and, and keep myself on the field and make it hard for these coaches to take me take me off. Well, I think five goals in two weeks, including that game winner, might make it a hard choice for him. So, Matt, Mike Bocklet, again, congratulations on being named the Warrior Offensive Player of the Week for Week 2, and uh, continued good luck for the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris.